So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects in an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops i'm your host court the guy that's gonna blare out like a trumpet so goddamn loud he scares his cats upstairs his neighbors three doors four doors five doors down and all the way across the home city of omaha even terrifying my co-host matt ah, what was that there uh, <laughs> that was the delayed reaction thanks to skype the, yeah that was the that was i was so terrified though I was terrifyingly terrified. <laughs> if I do it right, I sound like the trumpet that signifies the uh, rapture at the end of Red State. Yeah, you really could. Yeah, yeah I, I remember hearing that. <laughs> Uh, brother, that's the only Kevin Smith film from this millennia we're going to talk about. This just this millennia. Other millennias, yeah. Yeah, other millennia, Anything, fine. Hey, you really want me to fuck up your life? Anything from the late 1900s is fine. <laughs> right? It's there so you go. I, I fucking hate that shit, but that's what kids are saying nowadays. And um, 
I have feelings about it. <laughs> Look, man, we're aging out. Listen, there's going to be a day where they're going to be like, wow, you were alive in the 1900s? And I'm going to be like, yeah, asshole, I was. What was it like back then? Before you could have a phone that was like a computer. Well, it fucking yeah. blew. All right. Yeah, Obviously. it wasn't it was great. Listen, I once waited 30 minutes to watch a porn. <laughs> 30 minutes. Do you know what that's like? Look, no. <laughs> I was there 3,000 years ago when you had to wait 17 weeks for one three minute clip of porn on <laughs> LimeWire. I was oh. there on LimeWire. <laughs> I'll, I'll really fuck someone else's day up. I was there when you had to go through these things that are called magazines. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you would sneak out to the woods and sneak out to the woods and, and you would find you the stash sp- that somebody else left out there for their whack off <laughs> material in the woods. You're gonna be talking to one of your friends sometime. You're gonna be like, Yeah, then there was that time that my mom found my porn. You're like, What'd you do? Leave your bookmarks up? You're like, No, what'd you leave? Leave incognito mode up? No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> at oh, all. <laughs> incognito mode is a fucking pervert's best fucking friend, my it, man. It, it certainly is. It certainly is. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I get it. I'm aging out. I totally yeah. fucking am. I, I am. Yeah, like, we, I mean, I'm at the point now where they don't even bother trying to really advertise to me. I'm in that group where it's like, and everyone on up now. Yeah. Like, like the advertisers are so not interested in me in any way, shape, or form, and I am so happy to be that age. Right? Yeah. Like, we're at the age now where we should be wearing those fucking wraparound shades with a ball cap and ranting in a truck about how no one cares about what we think. Hey, listen, I told you, you didn't have to make fun of my blog. You just had to watch it and tell me about it, alright? <laughs> you don't have to make fun of it. Oh, Christ, you start but, doing that kind of shit, and I'm going to probably yeah. drop you as a friend. Oh, oh, God, no, it's like, I love the, you're all a bunch of snowflakes, but now let me spend 30 minutes in my truck complaining about the world changing. <laughs> <laughs> and how no one wants to hang out with me anymore, and girls yeah. think I'm ridiculous. Yeah, because apparently I got problems. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I unfortunately didn't hide any of these feelings, even when I was younger, so no girls wanted me, you know, even then. <laughs> all of this clips all of this yeah everything's here a clip yeah fuck it <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even fucking matter any fucking nope. more right yeah <laughs> no, it's it's fucking done anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah we all know existential dread we we know you want to talk about all the horrible things that are happening in the world but look man we've been on the brink of death for three fucking years we get it matt yeah yeah, we're almost all dead. Everyone's almost all dead. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but why are we really talking about aging out, getting older, and all of that kind of stuff? Because there's a whole bunch of controversy in the Stupid Bowl this last week, right? <sighs> And that's, there's a bunch of kids. That are, there's a bunch of kids that are terrified about watching their parents get up and dance because we finally aged up to that range. Is what I'm getting yeah, at. We're finally that, there. We're finally where classic means your music you liked as a kid, folks. Yeah, yeah. Like, listen, I I kind of was like I, I was at least a little bit prepared for this. Like, I'm not saying they're my favorite band or anything, but I remember the first time I heard Nirvana on a classic rock station, and I was like, okay, well that happens. Um, but now we finally had uh, a, r- a hardcore rap on the Super Bowl halftime show, which usually I'm always used to see it fucking, you know, the Rolling Stones or shit like that. The Who, something, you know, the only the only other time that it was actually ever really cool was when Prince did it. So it was like, wow, the Super Bowl halftime show is fucking cool again. But the reason that it's cool again is it's music that you identify with and that you can yeah, recall that I grew, from I your grew youth. Up with. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the kind of stuff that you were around and was like heavily influencing for you. And Even- some people are having a problem with the idea that they have aged out to the point where they aren't going to get the bands that they expect anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, the reason this one was even more maybe cooler for me than the Prince one, even though I loved Prince, is I was a little kid when Prince was huge. I wasn't really like a full grown, like I wasn't growing up. Yeah. I was just a little kid still. When those groups are huge is when I was in high school and shit. So it was like the first time something he would know that was huge when I was in high school was out and about for a Super Bowl halftime show. Yeah, but 1990 was just as far behind us now yeah. as 1960 was in the 90s. I, I don't know why you're talking to me. You could shut the fuck up and need to give it time. <laughs> 
You get what I'm saying. We have reached yeah. that age. And there are, are some there. people like, th- seriously, I've seen it like just in like uh, kids that I grew up with or whatever that are I'm still kind of casually an acquaintance with. I've yeah. seen some folks that have had some existential crisis over this where they're like, holy fuck, we're old now. And it's like, yeah, get used to it yeah. and start doing it gracefully and start embracing this part of your life. You can make this part of your life better than the other part that you had less control over. You know, right. like now it's on you for your yeah, happiness. I completely agree on that. And That's, move uh, forward. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I completely agree on all that. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's just fucking insane. It's an insane <laughs> It's an insane life we live. Right, but like, you get these markers to where, like, embrace the freedom of it, man. They're not trying mm-hmm. to fucking sell you shit anymore because they just basically placate you with a halftime show. You've reached that age. Congratulations. Yeah. Be super happy. You made it this far in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Word up. <laughs> <laughs> More than that, uh, uh, let's get back to the fucking why we're here in this movie. And we're talking about time and shit. One thing I'm glad that phased out of time were the red and blue fucking 3D glasses. I don't know, A, how 1950s and 60s bullies or nerds, because it was one of the two who always wore those things all the time, <laughs> wore those things all the time. Okay, those are 1980s movies lying to you about what happened in the 1950s. Okay, because uh, there's, I was, I was just wondering because I was like, there's no way anybody spent a whole day wearing these fucking things. No, you're I not watched... supposed to wear them for more than like an hour or two at a time, or they will cause headaches and shit. Fucking yeah, I felt like I was gonna die. <laughs> so, Silent Madness 3D is what we're 3D. talking about. Now, I watched this back to back in both versions of the 3D. I watched oh, it first with the red and blue with you for solidarity. And then mm-hmm. to be able to tell you what was wrong with the red and blue version that yeah. you saw and like where the 3D actually works when they use the modern technology of the real 3D to make it make it happen. I, we can talk about that as well. Um, right. But I'm just going to say it. This film is better in 2D to me than 3D. I, I wouldn't doubt that. Because I've watched all I'm three like, versions and it. I would rather just watch it flat. I really I'm would. I'm watching it. And with red and blue, it's like it's a black and white movie. Yeah. But it, it f- pops out at you. Yeah. It because fucks- you can't get any colors. Yeah. It fucks up the color really bad in the red and blue. Yeah. You are absolutely right. Uh, that's definitely something that we're going to deal with. Um, I actually kind of want to have you over for just a 2D version of this because I think you would even enjoy the film more. Um, I, I'm not going to say that it's would. fucking great, but this is a quintessential type slasher film. It's it's, it's, it's exactly a- what you want when you want a slasher it's film. A- Listen, again, we're going to burn the burn it all in the beginning of the show but i'll say it it's a perfectly adequate 80s slasher film it has everything an 80s slasher film is supposed to have oh actually that's a perfect setup for how i want to frame my review because i totally agree with that statement and i'm going to go through with you and show you while we're doing the review all the points where i'm like this is not a parody of slasher movies this is just the perfect epitome of everything that people think a slasher movie should be like when you see a a slasher movie featured in another type of movie from modern day. This is like the type of movie that they try to make it. Like they're trying to emulate the look the feel and just the level of acting and somewhat cornball cheesiness that's in this movie. They're trying to emulate it so perfectly. Yeah. And this nailed that without even fucking trying lightning in a bottle style. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think this is a, a perfectly great 80s slasher film. Just the fucking 3D part took away from it to me. Right. And like I said, we can talk about that as we do the review as well, because that's a lot of the experience that we need to get into, because that's how people probably saw it in the 80s. And maybe that's why this uh, uh, kind of is a forgotten gem almost. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, not dally about doing the review then no. because neither one of us wants to fuck about with this. This no. week. We want to get this show done and over with so you can fucking do it because, well, th- things happen this week. I'm still going <laughs> to do the pirate radio edit because I'm a fucking trooper and I don't care. Because, <laughs> yeah, you're fucking committed or you need to be committed. It's one of the two. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of both, like column A, column B kind of situation. So yeah, th- yeah. this week I'm rehashing a few songs that I've definitely played other places but let's face it how many fucking songs about serial killers and or slashers are out there i mean there can't be a lot you think there'd be a lot but there can't be a lot right plus we've done 340 weeks and if you can tell me where these songs were used in other episodes then you just listen to us just enough that's all yeah there you go up first after the legion patreon ad on the pirate radio edit is motherfucking thin lizzie and killer on the loose this will keep you quiet oh hi there i didn't see you you call me cutting a new show I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. 
I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. Thin Lizzy, write a song so perfectly suited for the type of misogynistic killer that's featured in Silent Madness, and yes, I'm gonna double dip on playing that motherfucking song. Word the fuck up. All right, so for everybody that doesn't want to play along and wants to actually know what episode it is, I can tell you the movie we covered, but not the number, because that's how I work. Yeah. And even though I have nothing to bounce off of, here's the fucking radio spot for Silent (laughs) Madness. Silent Madness. A terrifying, suspense-filled voyage into the dark places of the mind. He's at the school, and dangerous, I'm going back. Inside your head, the screaming never stops. Silent Madness in 3D. Rated R. The whole time during the trailer, Matt's silently judging me for being for judgy with him me. when I give him nothing yeah. to make a trampoline you, out of. You gave me nothing to bounce back to you, so what the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> Magic and this review. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck. Silent Madness, the first 20 minutes. You start with a lady. She's in a bathroom doing some makeup, and this guy walks in. She's like, oh, come on, man. You can't be in here. And we see she's a doctor in a mental facility. Um... She then confers uh, with another doctor, and that is our first clip. Dr. Van Dyce. What? Did you sign release papers on Romano Hunter? Who? Romano Hunter. Over there. Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Kruger said we were scheduled to release more patients. How can you and Dr. Kruger keep releasing patients as disabled as Romano? This is the fifth one in the last two weeks. I believe I know more about these matters than you do, Dr. Gilmore. I'm sure you do, Doctor. Your wisdom and expertise in these matters is legendary. Dr. Anderson, I don't see how they can justify discharging Romano. The man can't even Oh, Joan, you know how desperately overcrowded and understaffed we are. Kruger's release program has really benefited everyone. With fewer patients, we can give more attention to the really serious cases. Now, this is the release list for the last two weeks. I'm sure you'll agree that none of these people are dangerous to society. Doctor, it's just that... Joan, in a perfect world, we would keep every patient here until they were cured. In the real world, however, we barely have enough money to take care of them. 
Kruger's idea is simply to move patients back into society as simply as possible. Well, I think he's wrong in this case. Well, if you feel that strongly about Romano, we'll keep him. Though I may have to put him back on your caseload. Of course. Okay. Consider it done. All right. So the first thing that I want to talk about, if you were writing a movie to be a sort of parody of an 80s slasher, but like a loving lampoon style parody of an 80s slasher, the first thing that you do is you have your fucking psychopathic killer escape from an asylum or more to do the parody and or the lampooning. You throw in a hackneyed ham fisted social commentary about something that was going on at the time with the downsizing of mental health under the Reagan era because they were trying to get rid of the nanny state or whatever the fuck they were calling it and taking care of these people and getting rid of the social safety net for the mentally ill. This actually did happen. And the callousness, carelessness and reckless abandon that they did it with is demonstrated perfectly here in the movie. What this reminds me of is the kind of social commentary that was ham fistedly shoved in to the Grindhouse movies that both Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino tried to do to try and emulate that feeling that you got from those types of movies. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm getting at here is if you were trying to do a grindhouse movie and like try to get it to feel like it this is the ultimate feel of a grindhouse slasher to me it's already yeah. evident right here after the first clip with the way that people are acting the fact that it was shot in 3d the way that they bring you into the world and very clearly are ham-handedly throwing social commentary at you this is true and we also have a lazy doctor who almost seems he's asleep most of the time <laughs> so that's probably not good right and there's some like Freddy Krueger winks and nods I think a little bit too with the doctor being named Krueger the fact that they're in an asylum and all these people are getting out yeah yeah this is all true facts yep <laughs> but I, I uh, uh, let's see here. I'm just saying the exploitative elements are cranked in this this is beyond slasher this is grindhouse playing at slasher it seems like it yeah because you know it's a mental mental health facility you almost you know that's just almost standard. and I know that all the um, things I'm saying make it seem like I'm being negative or derogatory towards the film but like the reason that I'm making it the statement like this is they nailed the feel perfectly without even trying and I still think it's a great film I still find it extremely entertaining even at this point like I'm engrossed in it beyond the yeah. fact that it's like holy fuck this doesn't even need to be in 3D this is like really fucking gritty slasher man I'm down you know like already just after that clip I don't even have to see a kill yet yeah exactly the docs are later conferring about some patients they're they're outside and it's like well what's this patient you know one doctor says this patient is supposed to be here and the other lady doctor she's like well, no of course uh, you, we got him back you know the main doctor said they could bring him back he goes yeah but what about this one she's like oh yeah this one was this patient was supposed to be released anyway then we cut to there's a couple camping and uh they're getting set they're got a van they're gonna camp they're gonna have fun then we cut back to the our main heroine doctor that that sounded wrong our lead character no i think uh, you got it right the main heroine, heroine. doctor <laughs> Yeah, it just sounds bad. Right? Can we just do that for me, though? I mean, come on. Yeah, just the heroin doctor. Yeah, can we just call her the heroin doctor? The, the, the heroin doctor. I mean, um, I know spelling and pronunciation is very important whenever you're just saying things versus yeah. whenever you're reading them, but she is always going to be the heroin doctor to me. Yeah, right. Exactly. She checks some patient records using one of the other doctor's computers that she's not actually supposed to have access to. She's like hacking. How, yeah. But, I mean, how horseshit. I mean, just like this whole thing, like, you're not supposed to be using, uh, it, what, what's this lady, doc, what's this doctor? Because she's a lady, she doesn't get access to anything. I mean, we find out why later on she doesn't get access to anything, but, uh, no, they, this they're hospital. real misogynistic in the way they treat her. Even the fellow lady that made it all yeah. the way up to the glass ceiling. <laughs> that she's at well she's the head of the freaking hospital and she's still yeah i don't, I don't know uh <laughs> again so, it's it's ham fisting the social commentary yeah. but it's doing it in such a fun way that's grindhousey as shit that i've seen in other grindhouse films i don't even give a fuck she realizes though instead of john howard being released a howard johns was released <laughs> and howard johns was in there for a uh, murder so anyway then we cut to the escaped 
uh, person, he uh, he kills the couple. I mean, first, uh, first before anything, uh, the girl and the guy kind of fool around and get 3D boobs. Thank you, movie. Uh, um, by the way, in the <laughs> real 3D version of it, it's a serious thank you movie because, man, yeah. they, like, right out of the screen at you. It's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then we get a sledgehammer kill on the guy, and then uh, he throws a hatchet, and it kills the girl. You get all the cool little 3D shit. Yeah. he kills them both. The 3D stuff is effective, but completely unnecessary, because everything yeah, else that's that- going on with the movie is awesome. Exactly. Um... Then we cut to the doctor. She wants to check some patients in a s- different section of the hospital, but an orderly won't let her in without another doctor's approval. And the orderly is all sorts of creepy. So then we see um, a killer nabs another girl who's just heading off of school and puts her head in a vice and squeezes it until blood shoots out. Another little... But it lost all the expect because in the... Uh, red and blue 3d the, the blood's just like it's black and white so it's not as cool as it could be but okay whatever. the real 3d um the uh-huh. blood dripping off of the hair does look like it's coming at you uh when the girl comes bounding out of the van when he goes to throw the axe yeah she comes running out it freaks me out if like it totally got me in the real 3d because it, she popped out of the screen coming out of that van at me and nice. it was like texas chainsaw See, massacre yeah, i'm gonna have to watch the pop. The real 3D one. Yeah. Um, anyway, the doctor gets in, and the, the our main doctor, she gets in to check all those uh, patients in that special ward, and there are all sorts of fucked up bags over their heads. They're pure zombie modes of patients. This is the and part they- where I thought of what Robert Rodriguez was doing in his version of the movie for Grindhouse and the Planet Terror. Like, it was this sequence yeah. where I'm like, this is Grindhouse AF, man. No shit. Well, she gets interrupted by some orderlies, and that's our next I want you to tell me what's going on in this ward. These conditions are inhuman. These patients are inhuman. We get all the weird ones, the real crazies. For them, Ward L is the last stop. They're on Thorosol, Doc. One body to a bag. They uh, live here, and they're going to die here. You can't do that. You can't keep a person permanently locked up like that. They need exercise. Electricity, Doc. The miracles of modern science. We give them two minutes on these babies. Better than four hours of jogging. Yeah, it keeps them sharp. And best of all, there's no bed sores. Let me buy. Come on, Doc. Don't be hostile. How would you like another disciplinary report on file? You cannot come in here and... I can do exactly what I want. Now let me buy. We shouldn't be enemies, Doc. Come on, let's have a cup of coffee, get to know one another. You'll address me as doctor. And there's nothing we need to know about one another, except that I'm staff and you're an attendant. Dr. Kruger, you remember that patient from yesterday? Don't you think it'd be a little more professional if we talk privately in my office? This is important. I've discovered a terrible mistake. Discovered? What are you talking about? I'm talking about John Howard. I think the wrong patient was discharged in this place. Oh, really? And what has led you to this startling conclusion? Look at the computer printout. How did you get hold of this? I never gave you access to these files. Kruger, you've got a killer on the streets. Instead of letting John Howard free, you've released Howard Jones, a dangerous psychotic. And how did you get that information? Oh, I checked Ward L to find Howard John's bed empty and this discharge paper. You put in Ward L. Someone had to check on this. How the hell did you get into Ward L? You can't just wander around there without clearance. Clearance? What clearance? Howard Johns didn't need clearance to get out of Ward L. Oh, look, what are you doing to these poor people? Either you release them prematurely or you, you, you stuff them in a plastic bag. All right, all right, you've got my attention. So, what are you going to do? You can't just let a criminal psychotic like Johns roam the city. Considering his condition, he's going to be a real joy on the streets of Manhattan. Have you told anybody else? No, not yet. I wanted you to be the first to hear the good news. I'm on my way to Anderson's office now. I don't think you need to disturb Dr. Anderson right now. I've got a meeting with her myself shortly. I can tackle the problem with her then. Is that it? I think so. Look, if Howard Johns has been released, I'm sure we can get him back without too much trouble. Certainly nothing to bother your pretty little head about. All right? How fucking condescending and bullshit fucking can you get? 
prick. By the way, that's the end of that first 20 minutes. All right, we were talking about it, but it's definitely solidified here. The way that those guys get super creepy over her, the way that the bodies are in bags and they have them on these various drugs that apparently keep them comatose, but then they exercise them. Um, The way the guy gets super rapey on the doctor, and then you realize they're left alone with people that are sedated so much they don't even know where they are. Yeah. And, And like it gets a super dark turn really, really fast. And what is being hinted at that since the guy was released from this war that these people are being tortured in some way and that also their muscles are being artificially stimulated in a workout that is much more excessive than they would have meaning this guy that just got out is coming off of some dope but is also super fucking jacked now which we've seen in the way that he goes after that fucking van with the sledgehammer can we talk about the aggressive violent outburst at that van that this guy does it's terrifying it is. It is hard freaking core goes after this thing. It is way bad. <laughs> it's super fucking intense. And I'm like, dude, do not get out of the van. And then he goes to kind of see what's happening and tries to see out the window. And the fucking guy clobbers his hand. The effect of his hand getting smashed is actually yeah. really fucking decent. Now, uh-huh. the red and blue 3D, you are absolutely right. It drains all the color out. It just does not fucking work. And all it does is give you a fucking headache. So, yeah, I'm. You're you're instantaneously watching a black and white movie. Basically, yeah. Like you're if your brain can't process the coloring in that, it doesn't matter the version of the 3D glasses. I use the ones that came with it. It did that. I use the ones that like I gave to you to use uh, that I sent with Bev to your stupid bowl party. Yes. <laughs> um, I use those types of glasses. I tried that with it as well, and it was fucking terrible. But I watched the whole thing like that just because I knew that you were going to, and I did it out of solidarity. But that's the thing. I like the film so much. I wanted to watch it in 2D, but then I thought. But no, I'll just watch it in the next 3D first to compare it. And then, yeah, in the real 3D, the effects actually all work. I mean, all, all the 3D stuff, um, there's tons of stuff popping out. There's blood splatter. The eyeballs dropping out actually works. Everything that's set in the screen is actually set up to a really great depth of field, which is my favorite yeah. version of 3D. My favorite version of 3D is actually 3D where you don't even really need it. It's just cool when it's there because you get the entire look of this whole world. And you yeah. feel every moment in that asylum like you're there like it makes you feel like you're in there like you're just kind of looking through the window the way that the 3d works with the real 3d and it's yeah. it's pretty gruesome in there the whole entire yeah, time and, uh, i mean uh again if it weren't for all the i don't know the type of 3d it was i guess for lack of a better word this would have been more enjoyable okay <laughs> 3D is essentially a gimmick. There are a few yeah. people that can do stuff in 3D and make it pretty much a fucking art form. The best 3D I've ever seen is the later Drudge Dread movie with Carl Urban. The best use oh, of okay. 3D I have ever seen. Both like popping out of the screen and the depth of the screen and everything. Like it's Yeah, cuz there was a while there where 3D came rip roaring back about what 10 years ago. Uh, theaters always have this thing that they try to bring people back that they offer that TV can't offer. Yeah. But then 3D TV happened because of all the stuff that was being 3D in theaters and then people just kind of gave up on it. It's the same thing that happened with 3D where the gimmick would travel back and forth like TV tried to do a few things in 3D to get people to watch. You know, like you could yeah. line up to see Creature in the, from the Black Lagoon. You could line up at like this store if your local broadcaster was doing it and they would be handing out 3D glasses for everybody, but it never worked on 480i TV like standard oh, definition oh. TV. It never really worked all that great. The color just, it didn't fucking work. Uh, the yeah. best version of it is the polarized version that they call real 3D now as far as it works. But now that I've said that, 3D, 4D, all that kind of stuff, if you are the type of person that that enhances your enjoyment, that's great. But to me, it's just kind of like a gimmick or an amusement park ride thing. And while it enhances the adventure and all of that kind of stuff, it doesn't really like feel like an art form choice in a lot of cases. Again, except for dread. Now, this film clearly is going the gimmick route or the hokum part of the 3D of like kind of like what they did with Friday the 13th 3D where they used the yo-yo into your face and anything they could think of to do 3D. Yeah. But what <laughs> this film, Silent Madness, does with its cornball 3D is still keep it to all of the gruesome murder shit and the grindhousey elements that you want to see. And the stuff popping out of the screen is usually a body part or bloodshed or something like that, unless it's not that part of the scene. And then you have plants or other things that look like they're coming out of the screen and stuff that, yeah. that, that the trick works. So they did it gimmicky, but at the same time, it's in service to the fact that 
it's a grindhouse slasher. So all of these elements work really well together. And it's a fucking shame. I've never heard of this before I bought it sight unseen from when it was released <laughs> because I liked the cover and I was like 3D. Cool. That'll be a fun review to do. I'll give Matt a headache with the blue and red 3D. I'll kill Matt with this. This will be great. I can't <laughs> wait to make Matt have a migraine all day from watching this. Motherfucker. I'll show him. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you by finishing this review. No, oh, hey, all right. Okay, the next 20 minutes we start with. Um, we are at a sorority house. A lot of little girls are playing Monopoly, having fun. Um, however, it is break week, uh, so a lot of them are going to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, they're leaving, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they start dancing a little bit, having fun, and that's when the den mother shows up, and she kind of is like, oh, you got to be, don't be dirty. Uh, uh, two questions for you. Yeah. Have you seen Black Christmas, first of all? No. Okay, so then you wouldn't know whether or not this reminds you of Black Christmas because it absolutely does for me, so that question's answered and done. Number two question, their house mother, when she starts screaming, did you have a flash of where you should know her from? Uh, she looked familiar, but I couldn't tell you from where. Okay, George Romero's Creep Show. Uh-huh. The Father's Day segment. The chick that always gave her father the cake but was at his grave getting drunk. That is the actress. Huh. Delia, you bitch, where's my cake? I think Delia was her name. Wow, there you go. That's something. Here's the thing. I didn't recognize her face, but when she starts screaming, you whore, you slut, you leave him alone, or whatever it was that she's yeah, screaming yeah, yeah. at everybody, I was like, holy fuck, that's the lady from Creep Show. But I couldn't, like, I like the screaming like triggered something in me in a memory, and I couldn't remember what it was, and it took me that long to figure it out. I was like, holy fuck, that's the lady from Creep Show that kills her dad <laughs> in, you're in like, the hey, Father's man. Day segment. And you're like, hey, lady, you should calm down. <laughs> <laughs> right, and like this intense screaming and all that stuff, I'm like, she's sus immediately because of those yeah. two things in my brain like and I, it's a grindhouse movie it's a gimmicky 3d thing it's a fucking ton of fun so far and i'm like she's sus something's up something's going on here because you, you don't get that concerned about uh you know girls just being girls and having fun uh, without it you <laughs> okay. know what i mean well there's that and it's also very clearly a girl with her shirt pulled up dancing like that and a bunch of girls goofing off to music is a triggering yeah. event of some sort for her it's yes. obvious in that case yes yeah, that is true one girl she's gonna go get some bags from the seller and their seller is like a, a corporation seller i mean Right? The boiler room, everything? Okay. It's a college campus. It's a rather large sorority house that probably houses a lot of people. They have underground tunnels for maintenance in all of those old school universities. So I'm guessing it's like a Boston kind of thing because you've seen like a Boston colleges that do that shit. I, at least I'm speaking of fringe where I know that that shit exists. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So like it having a boiler room for that size of a building and then also probably sharing um, some of that boiler because the pipes would go everywhere. That's why they called them steam tunnels, right? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. I mean, that's, but the fact that it's under this building is just that it's, that's the size of the building for their house. And this is probably um, a boiler room for more than just this building because that's how those campuses were set up. Yeah. That's uh, probably true. So anyway, she's down there getting her stuff. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the killer's there and uh, steams her fucking face off. So in 3D. In 3D. Three- these but kills exactly. are brutal and violent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that got to me. Like, the kills are really good. These are mis- uh, He's a misogynistic motherfucking killer, for sure. He hates women. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hates them. I mean, he doesn't care too much about men either, but it, you can tell women are definitely who he's targeting. <laughs> he will ignore a man unless that person becomes a threat, but he will actively pursue and kill any female human that he yeah. sees. Yeah, that's a fact. So after all this, the doctors meet for a meeting, and that's our next clip. I call this meeting because of a serious accident that was brought to my attention by Dr. Gilmore. Because of the similarities in the names of two of our patients, a release order was accidentally signed for a man that the state had declared criminally insane. Now, all this could have been a monstrous problem. Uh, Dr. Anderson, I must apologize for both my staff and indeed myself, but fortunately I have discovered that the problem was merely clerical. Howard Johns, the patient in question, was not released, as some people seem to have assumed. What do you mean? (laughs) It's, it's, It's really quite simple. You see, Howard Johns was not discharged, as the papers indicated. The record should have read, deceased. I don't understand. 
Then why wasn't John Howard released as you originally intended? We should have noticed the problem ourselves. You can see that while Howard John's file reads discharged, John Howard's file mistakenly reads deceased. An obvious switch in the records. You see, after the Barrington sorority murders, he was found innocent by reason of insanity and was committed to Cresthaven Hospital. He passed away from natural causes September 27th. It's okay, thanks very much. Now, we've really been very lucky that nobody dangerous has been released. Mm -hmm. But this kind of error is inexcusable. It's unacceptable. Dr. Anderson, could I ask one question? Mm -hmm. What was done with Howard John's body? I will the research you see. Well, doctors, what did happen in this case? I hardly think the research department would have much use for a body that's been cremated. Dr. Kruger is more familiar with this case than I am. Thank you. Now, in cases like these, when the patient dies in test and without family, the standard procedure is to cremate the body. And is that what happened? Yes, yes, Virgil thought of it last week. May I see the death certificate and cremation order? All right. Dr. Gilmore, I think it's slightly out of line. It should be available, shouldn't it? Dr. Gilmore, what business is no, this please, of yours? Please, please, will everyone be quiet? Thank you. Joan, I don't have any problem with presenting you with the death certificate. Now? Well, have these documents kept in the files? Certainly. Of course, it may take several days to get the information back. You see, when I discovered the error, I sent the papers immediately to the state for correction. Dr. Kruger, Joan, may I see you both for a moment, please? And this was a most unfortunate incident, Dr. Kruger. I feel that you're rushing your program a bit. I want you to ease up. Do your homework more thoroughly. And Dr. Anderson, you know our policy about the patient. Ease up. It's more important that we don't make any mistakes. Yes. Joan, you've been with us how long now? Uh, four about? months. That's all? You must have been assigned every weekend since July. How about taking this weekend off? Give you a chance to get some of the pressure from this place off your shoulders. Sounds like a good idea. Good. I'll see you Monday morning. And then in the meantime, all the paperwork on the late Howard Johns will be completed. Okay. I'm glad you're taking some time off, Dr. Gilmore. It's not good for a psychiatrist to experience too much stress, you know. Two of the patients in Ward L used to be shrinks. Bye. Oh, man, they're just driving home the point they're trying to make here, are they not? And, yeah, and number one, fuck you if that's not a threat. <laughs> <laughs> There's that as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Okay, but this, yeah. this is the most obvious slow motion three-person cover-up on film that I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's there. I mean, if you don't see the weird twist coming having to do yeah. with the functions of this hospital, you are either not paying attention or you're rubbing your fucking temples because the 3D is giving you a headache. That that could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to cry, but it was hard. No, I'm just saying, like, if you miss it, it's it's one of those two things because you, you either just completely yeah. weren't paying attention or your head hurt so fucking bad from the 3D you missed it. Yeah. No, no shit but yes either way that that is exactly what's happening there but yes this is uh very much you kind of have the idea that even though somebody's supposed to be her friend in this group and be like responsible they are obviously not yeah it's super fucking clear but the way that they do it is a very it feels like they're being tongue-in-cheek about it right like they're just like they're they're not taking themselves too seriously they're like come on we're a 3d slasher let's have some fun it's yeah we're Everyone's just trying to have a good time here. Right. You know, it, it is exactly how it feels. It, it feels like you're supposed to be in on the joke and like this is supposed to be a knowing parody movie of something it so perfectly is just an example of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's so just... fucking weird. Like it's 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 kind of disillusioning. The only time I've ever gotten that feeling where it was like if this was made nowadays, it would very clearly be an homage kind of parody loving thing for slasher films. And that is Blood Rage, right? Yeah. Which is also like they fell into that. They weren't even trying. And what it is, is it so perfectly encapsulates that place and that time like everybody mm -hmm. thinks of the 80s as like this bright fucking neon super great fucking yuppie fest party when in reality it's like this film
film where it's a lot of fucking browns and a few fucking pastels and a lot yeah. of puffy clothing that is really unflattering on people and a lot of feathered hairstyles that are kind of trying to pull the, <laughs> the Fairchild look or whatever the fucker fucking name was and not Morgan Fairchild Morgan yeah, Fra- yeah. and not really kind of pulling it off. You know what I'm saying? Like it just yep. it's basically like this layer of just mild bummer disappointment that nobody remembers the 80s is how it actually was like they want to pretend like it's how it looked in like fucking back to the future and it fucking didn't this is what yeah this this was the experience for most of what the country looked like in the fucking 80s this is pretty goddamn much what it looked like is this movie like all the the colors and everything like that it's the same thing with blood rage and that's why it's not wrong it it, and it it so perfectly encapsulates it that it feels like it's trying to lampoon it you know it really does but it's like it's not it's just this was made in that time in that place and so perfectly represents what everybody thinks of when they think of this type of movie like in both cases it's amazing so anyway then uh the doctor uh using her time off goes to that killer's hometown where the you know killer killed everyone she talks to the local sheriff who is such a whiny little bitch and just kind of she tells him what's up and he gets concerned that the killer's back but then she's like he could be dead he wants to call the hospital she says only talk to this specific doctor because fuck it i don't trust she doesn't trust anybody else you know because she's smart and he (laughs) kind of shoes her away to the local newspaper so she heads over to the local newspaper and well that's our next clip yes I help you? I hope so. The sheriff said you might. Um, I'm doing research for a magazine article on Howard Johns. Uh, could I see your microfilm files? We don't have microfilm files. It's all right, Ann. Uh, why, why do you want to know about Howard Johns? Ann, I'll take care of this. Oh, you have work to do. This is not something you should waste your time on. Who's wasting time? <laughs> if I'm... Um... You want to take a look at our back issues, you're welcome to. But you could uh, spend a month down there wading through all that material. They're not in order then? No. Mark has too many interests outside the newspaper. Which is why I cannot do without you, Anne, my dear. Mark, it's Paul Barton. You take care of it. So, I understand that you are interested in the sorority massacres. Yes. You know, The Voice sold out for three solid months on that subject. It's about the school board issue. Tell him that I'm in a meeting with a writer. What was your magazine? Uh, National Report. A writer from the National Report. What happens to Moonlight as a psychiatrist at Crest Haven? <laughs> the sheriff called, huh? Yes. Mark McGowan. <laughs> Joan Gilmore. Hi. Listen, I'd be interested in any information you might have on Barrington's favorite son. Wants to talk to you. And I'll be back shortly. Hi, Paul. How's this for an idea? You want to get more information about John's, right? Right. So, like a good investigative reporter, I arrange for you to become an alumnus of the sorority in question. It's, it's mid-semester break. You're passing through town. There are plenty of empty rooms in the sorority house. There you are at the scene of the crime. When you get your patient, I get my story. Cute idea, country boy. How do I pass myself off as an ex-sorority member? Anne, in my office. She was a Delta Omega sister. We, we, we could borrow her ring. Well, you've just got it all figured out now, haven't you? I mean, he is a fucking reporter and definitely more competent than the fucking bumbling dummy cop in this fucking town. But whatever, lady, give him shit, even though his idea is fucking great. Yeah. I mean, this lady's kind of pretentious for being our heroin doctor. But to defend uh, the heroin doctor, she has been given shit by men left and right for everything that yeah. they're trying to do. So the fact that this guy offers a simple solution to try and solve her problem probably would rub her a little the wrong way right off the bat. I mean, I got to I, I got to cut heroin lady a little bit. Or heroin doctor. I'm sorry. She didn't go to seven yeah. years of heroin medical school. To be yeah, called, heroin, be called lady. heroin lady. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. But heroin doctor here uh, very clearly is still a little frazzled by the way that everybody is treating her. So she's kind of lashing out at him, but she softens up super fast. And 
I should lighten up on her as well. Yes. And uh, I also call this guy, uh, I don't let him get away from too much because I do call him newspaper boy a lot. So um, it's, it's you know. <laughs> right. Like if we didn't have the fucking serial killer shit involved here, what we really have is a Lifetime Christmas movie where if she were doing this during Christmas, this guy would be teaching her the meaning of life and showing her that there's more to life than her hard work as a psychologist. This could be a rom-com. Yeah. That takes place during Christmas. It very much well could yeah. be because their meet cute is very similar to one of those. Yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, she shows up to the uh, sorority house. That she's got the ring, and they all accept her in there. They talk a little about the old murders after she gets there, and because she asks questions. But um, they also say, you know, they don't know much. The girls don't. That they're gonna want. She's gonna want to talk to the the uh, the den mother. She she was around back then. Well, the doctor then goes to meet the den mother, and that's our next clip. Oh, <laughs> Miss Gilmore, please come in. Uh, I'd completely forgotten that you were coming. <laughs> well, actually, it's Dr. Gilmore. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm helping myself to a, to a sip of sherry or two. <laughs> it gets very quiet up here on vacation time. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Collins. I can understand. It must be tough taking care of all those girls. Hmm? And you get fond of them, right? And then they leave. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. It gets lonely. Yes. It gets very lonely. Girls, all I have left now, that Francis is um, gone. Francis is my son. He loved me. <laughs> he used to bring me fresh flowers every morning. <laughs> then uh, God took him away. Would you like some sherry? No. No, thank you. Do you have children? No, I don't. Uh, you know, children are... They are a gift to the world. I try to protect my girls. My girls against everything. Against sickness, against bad grace, against bad boyfriends. <laughs> and murder? You were house mother when it happened, weren't you? What kind of a doctor are you? I'm a psychiatrist, Mrs. Collins. You have no rights, you know. You really have no right. It must be very hard. I'm sorry. Yes, it's hard. I don't sleep nights. I have nightmares. Tell me about it. It might help. It was a terrible night. Howard, yeah, that's the custodian. Right? He always went away. So he always went away uh, during Pledge Week. Hell's Week, that's what the girls called it. Right? So this one particular night, he comes back. Huh, nothing mm. sus about this conversation. Not at all. Well, anyway, she tells the story. Uh, we see a bunch of girls there in the boiler room. They're doing uh, Hell Week to the pledges, spanking them. And they see that uh, this maintenance man, uh, who was our killer, he's watching. Was this like uh, kind of so sepia tone for you in the red and blue too? Yeah. Like what you could tell, it felt like it was like a lighter brownish kind of black and white. Kind of, yeah, I guess. I guess. No, it all stayed the same. Okay. It all stayed the same. In red and blue, to me, it stayed the same. But okay. by this point, I ain't taking a break yet. So my eyes could have just been dead at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 know I what believe you're it was. About. I believe it was right after this. I decided to take a break because I I like took about an hour break uh, after watching gotten this far because I needed to give my eyes a rest. Okay, so it's like sort of sepia tone ish in the real 3D, and it's like sort of done in like flashback because she's telling the story and it's like she voices over what's happening. Yeah. Basically, and and but they're showing it to you, and they actually filmed all this stuff, but they went this route with it because there's a different direction that they actually kind of were taking it, um, in the part that they filmed, and I maybe they couldn't get the rights, um, to the song that they were putting over top of the girls and what they were doing because they were playing like classic, uh, like 1950s style rock or something like that or 60s rock or whatever it was. I can't hmm. remember the fucking song off the top of my head, and maybe they lost the rights to the song, so they did this. Uh, I could be. I mean, that's a uh, that's a possibility. 
Anyway, they are dancing, and they grab him, and they start feeding him drinks, and they're dancing around him, and they get kind of nude around him, and, and uh, you're thinking it's all going to be a good time for this poor kid, and then they start spanking him. He apparently loses it on that and kills them all with a nail gun, and that's the end of that 20 minutes. First of all, he was yeah. having a grand old time, even when they were holding him down on the chair. It was in, right up until he started getting spanked, and yeah. some yeah. of us actually would have not only maintained our cool but would have gone with the flow and gotten really into that dude you should have chilled yeah 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 i mean in all but honesty we don't know this guy's past right they didn't ask him if he would like to be spanked right they, right there's consent there's is the problem issue. here and that it yeah. really turns out very badly for them because of it yeah i'm just fucking jealous because like this is the sort of thing i hang out in boiler rooms for all the time uh, man I've hung out in a lot of boiler rooms. I'm going to tell you, not once. Yeah. Not a once. Yeah. I, this guy this guy ruined the average. Yeah. No fucking <laughs> hustler forums for me on this shit. You never <laughs> couldn't believe that this would happen to me, Matt. It was almost like bad luck for everybody. I mean, if it was us, either you or me or probably many of our listeners, this happened, it, everything would have been fine. But yeah. nope, they had to find the one guy who had real problems with this. Yeah, this would have been a completely <laughs> different fucking flashback and probably and made it an movie. even more fun movie to watch. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is why the movie is a slasher film and not a porn. Exactly, because they didn't <laughs> get consent and therefore revenge is justified. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if the murdering is justified, but... Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> there's other films where someone didn't get consent and their murder was justified to us. So we kind of have to play a little fair here. God, yeah, I guess we do, don't we? Because we have. It was a humiliating, traumatizing event. Yeah, that may have been enough to where on, on if, somebody on somebody who's also special needs. Apparently, yeah. So I mean, so I'm I mean, to say justified. We have to say it, right? He's kind of justified Fuck. in this, and in, in movie talk anyway. You never kill I mean, anyone, but I mean, still, yeah. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just an all. asshole. No, I'm not even saying that. Not even right now. You're not even being an asshole. You're not wrong. You're not an asshole. I just can't go there quite yet. Okay, you're gonna have to give me time to to rev up to that. <laughs> um, we start the next twenty minutes. Uh, the doctor is telling newspaper uh, dude about uh, what she found out over dinner. Uh, she tells him there's something. Uh, something's also up the hospital. Um, that you know she doesn't trust people. Well, he sh shits on that and like, oh, you're giant conspiracy theorist whatever and and tells her that you know oh you're just thinking too special and then she laughs it off like ah, oh, maybe i am and you're like wow what a fucking shit stain dude you are um anyway the next day we see the doctor she she i it's i think it's pretty obvious she got laid i mean that's that's the what you're led to believe at least the only way they could have made it more into the direction that you see in the parody movies is yeah. when she has like an obvious hickey that's like grotesque and then like everybody yeah. plays it up that it's so romantic but she is like yo oh whoa, good morning everybody and you're like um all right uh just hold down <laughs> what's going on around here exactly she's then shown the boiler room by one of the girls where all the murders happen as they're looking around they uh they get uh, interrupted by um a uh, uh security guard there and you know it's kind of a little jump scare actually that got me a, a little bit i was like whoa hey all right uh how's it going and the 3d uh, for that actually worked uh, the, in, to, yeah. to its advantage because when he comes out of nowhere that jump he pops yeah. out of the screen at you too and it works great oh yeah it, it really does so i was like hey all right well you got me. Congrats. Even in the red and um, blue, that jump really worked. <laughs> yeah, right. The other girl, she leaves uh, as she's kind of done. And the lady still goes looking around and she bumps right into the killer. Uh, right as it seems like he's going to like get a hold of her, she's able to scoot away. She runs, she grabs the security guard, and they go to the room where he was, but the lights have been broken. They can't find anyone. The security guard thinks, you know, oh, you girls are all just crazy. When and she's first confronted by him, we I got to stop you and back you up here. Yeah. When she's first confronted by him, there is a brief moment where she attempts to reach him. And it looks like when she's communicating with him that he is going to respond. But then he immediately snaps back into this like rage monster kill mode and goes yeah. after her. And then that's where she's able to fight and get herself away. It's important because not only is she a doctor, she is a heroin doctor. And that moment yes. of bravery where she attempts to do what is right for the person who means her harm is something we need to commend. And that, that they put that in the film is incredible. 
I agree because yeah, she does. Uh, you know, she tries to reach him, and it does look like at one point she she's gonna do it. You know th- th- that there's something there that she can reach and and maybe help. Yeah, that's um, why she is a heroin doctor, dude. Of course, the heroinism that she portrays in trying to doctor him makes her the heroin doctor. She's definitely done a lot of heroin. She is the epitome of heroin. When you think of heroin, yeah, yeah. you think of this doctor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But when they leave, we see he's up in the rafters uh, hiding. Uh, so she then uh, gets back up to the main house. She calls the hospital, and that's our next clip. Joan, how are you? Why are you calling me on your day off? Doctor, listen. I found Howard Johns. I'm up in Barrington, New York, and I found him. You've done what? I found Howard Johns, the psychotic that Kruger said was dead. You've seen him? Yes, he's here at the Omega Sorority. Well, if you've caught him, I'll have the ambulance sent. No, I was alone, and I couldn't stop him, but I know it's him. All right, now listen, Joan, you stay put. I'll get some of our people up there as fast as I can. I can't wait. I don't think he's hurt anyone yet, but you're more than three hours away, and I think he's violent. I'm on my way to the sheriff's office now. That sheriff won't be able to handle him. You wait till I get some of our people up there who can cope. Doctor, I don't trust our people. Okay, and be careful. All right. Well, you know, you're just interested in what the hell's going on around here. If you don't think that doctor is sus by now, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I'm like I'm at a I'm at a loss for trying to help you out with your life because you've yeah. Uh, if you're watching this, know, if you're watching this intently in 2D and you don't get it, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't worry. You don't even get to have the third dimension. You can't even see the plot line in front of you. <laughs> That's legit the funniest shit you've said in a while. That's awesome. I mean, holy shit, man. Come on. <laughs> you don't deserve that third dimension. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't deserve to see that third dimension. You can't see the goddamn plot. <laughs> what, I mean, what's the third dimension going to do for you? Absolutely nothing, apparently. Goddamn right. Uh, Doc then runs, grabs the newsboy, and they go to the sheriff. They talk to the sheriff, but, but there's no proof, of course. And he doesn't believe them. He even gets a call from the hospital, talks to Dr. Anderson, and they say, hey, we have the death certificate here, and they even send it over. Uh, and uh, we're seeing that even Dr. Anderson, the head lady, is back in the other docks. Well, our heroin doctor, she's pissed and is going to go back to campus. Well, the other docks meet, and they're going to send some orderlies to go uh, to the campus and kill the killer. And also our heroin doctor. And we see um, the fucking main Dr. Anderson. She is totally involved in all this. So now everything's kind of taken taking shape. That's the end of that 20 minutes. We're getting set to head into the final 30 where things sort of start picking up a bit. Okay, so they're sending out their fucking thugs for the patients that they have been pretty much obviously illegally experimenting on and doing weird shit to and or just keeping them sedated and out of the way so they're less trouble. Yeah. These two and are also, clearly And also the fact them. that they are, they're so lackluster in their records and in their hiring practices that they also, uh, this is a killer that they fucking released. So, I mean, that also can't help. And it gets driving home. Like, the more you think that it can't get any worse for the fucking negligence and just, like, pure libertarian way of running an asylum that is being done here, I can't describe it any other way than that. Like, the essence of what Ayn Rand wants in an asylum is this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is libertarian's fucking wet dream right here. Um, <laughs> right. Like, the way that this no is... No regulation. Like, right. Complete Jesus. lack of care for anything other than maximizing profits in some way, shape, or form, uh, including the hiring of thuggery to get things done by any means necessary that maximizes profit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, libertarians, just Republicans, but they're too embarrassed to actually say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, like, that's, I don't know how else to describe that asylum because, like, they drive that point I home mean, so you, fucking you, much. You, you nailed it. That's exactly how you should describe that asylum. All right, good. Um, and the way that they, they do all of this stuff, like, just when you think it can't get any worse, like, any, just when you thought they couldn't fucking violate a code of ethics as a human being that we all have to agree upon in a society where we depend upon each other to survive just when you thought that these people couldn't drive that much lower below the standard of living 
as human beings. They fucking go there in this film and make these characters that much more vile and loathsome. I honestly, at this point, don't know where the horror is supposed to be coming from anymore because it's coming from fucking everywhere. Like, well, yeah, because now you have uh, uh, you have these um, uh, horrible, horrible orderlies. They're not on their way to kill the killer and the doctor. I mean, it's a whole new. I, I, I love the movie for this. It's a whole new take of the slasher thing. Now the killer is going to be hunted by two other people who might as well be serial killers. And the doctors still be hunted by both. Yeah, it becomes an instant heal program all converging on the doctor. Our heroine doctor has to survive all of this now. They just ratcheted yeah. up a level. This is where I am telling you, in my mind, that is cementing this as 100% the most grindhousey fucking slasher that I can think of off the top of my head right now. Like. I- like, can't say you're wrong. <laughs> like this and um, Blood Rage are akin to each other for that, where it just feels so fucking grindhousey when you're watching it, and it nails that feeling. Like, yeah, this and Blood Rage could fucking double feature in a drive-in when I was a kid, and I could have probably been to it and fucking loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, like it well, would have been fucking perfect. You know, and yeah, yeah, it's it was a uh, it's fucking fun. It's what it is. Yeah. And like I said, this shit that they're doing with this and the way that they keep ratcheting it up is taking it in a different way and a different direction and a different um, kind of look at the genre and how to do things. And it's really interesting that they did this the way that they did it. And just when I thought, okay, this is getting a little formulaic, they snap this on me. And I'm like, oh, and by the way, the 3D has been fun the entire time. Court, this is a blast. Chill the fuck out. And you're like, all right, fine. But. <laughs> Fuck off first. Don't tell me to chill out. Who the <laughs> fuck are you? <laughs> it's pretty much at this point where I realize that I am in sensory overload from this movie, but like I'm having a really good fucking time. It's just that it's so much I can't acknowledge it yet. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot. You're, you're dealing with a lot, but it's still beyond a shadow of a doubt fun. <laughs> you could sit back and watch all of this and not think about it too deeply in any way, shape, or form and still have a total blast, but there is some stuff to really sink your teeth into in this if you want to as well. well. Stuff that still even translates well into our times, right. for crying out loud. Right, and when I say they're handling it ham-handedly, I think they're trying to drive the point home because I forget who it was that said it, but there was a great filmmaker who uh, got a compliment on the subtlety of his films how he thought that, that this person thought their films were so amazingly subtle and you know why why is there so little subtlety nowadays and the director responded yeah subtlety is great as long as you hit them over the head with it <laughs> nice <laughs> Not not bad. Yeah. So what I'm <laughs> what I'm getting at here is they want to make sure that you get the point when they're doing this in the film. And this uh very liberal agenda that existed in a very Reagan era eighties. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's pretty amazing to have that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the the very serious like pushback of what this is causing and happening in society. From the actions of the folks in this asylum, the very much fuck you to the yuppie generation of me, me, me that this film is doing makes me fucking love it for that alone. But there's so much more stuff on top of that. We haven't even gotten to the end of the fucking movie yet. And it just keeps piling shit on to you to where honestly, like when I was watching it, I didn't know how to take it because it was all just... It was just so much, and I was like, "Holy shit, this movie is fuck." It's this so much. I was trying to send a message, and I tried to think about that fucking message. If my eyes weren't, you know, fucking dying, right, right, because the three D takes away from what they're really yeah. trying to do with the message, but it kind of sideloads it into your brain when you think about it later. So it's kind of ingenious that they did that at the same time. True. True. <laughs> this this may very well be a cinema psyop of a movie, my man. That, I mean, it very well could be, yeah. It's fucking you up, and then, you know, you'd be like, hey, this sucks. And they're like, hey, we don't fucking care, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying is it puts you off just enough to where you're not thinking about it. It drives that message home into your brain to where when you do think about it later and really, really think about it, maybe it kind of sinks in a little bit more, and maybe they persuaded and changed. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. No, I'm giving it way too much credit, but it's fun to think yeah, that that I might mean, be possible. Yeah, right? Come on. Be a dick. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, all right, we go into this final 30. Uh, newsboy, the doctor, uh, they fight a little bit because she's like, You didn't really back me up in there. And he's like, Hey, let's just, you know, he goes, I'm sorry. They come up to the campus and they see 
that um, the newsboy's car, his tires have been slashed. And not just slashed, like fucking perforated with like some kind of like sledgehammer or something. Like it's broken and ripped. Yeah. It's oh, not, yeah. It's, not it's not a clean cut. Like it looks like the guy bit it with his teeth or some shit. It's it's definitely a rage thing right there. Exactly. Yeah. It's the result of some kind of rage non thinking attack that just happened to work. Yeah. Not a subtle slashing. Yeah, exactly. Um so the couple they, they go into the, the sorority house and we find out from the girls that all their cars tires have been slashed. And that the phone lines have been cut. They believe it's a fra- fraternity, a local fraternity that's done it, because they always do that. Okay, check yeah. on the slasher cliche of extremely stupid victims that kind of get what they deserve for not following all of the signs. Yeah, but I mean, but apparently this fraternity does this all the time, which tells me, holy shit, what a shit fraternity. Don't go slashing fucking tires and cut the phone lines. That shit's fucking just weird yeah that's not a fucking prank that's stalkery no. controlling fucking psychotic behavior you pieces that, of a, shit toxic that's, male motherfuckers that's not prank that's not a prank that's vandalism motherfucker <laughs> this is a fraternity that is institutionalizing rape pure and fucking yeah, simple yeah, oh definitely definitely um uh, they also have no word from the den mother. No one can find her. Um, so the newsman, when he says he's going to take, one of the girls wants to leave. She's supposed to leave and meet up with her sister and her sister's boyfriend who are camping in the van. And, you know, uh-oh. So, um. Yeah, we know who that doc- is auto- automatically. Yeah. So the uh, newsman is going to take her in the doctor heroine's car and then stop by his house, call to get the phone repair company out to the sorority house to get that fixed. Then we cut to the orderlies. They're talking as they're driving out to the campus. They're talking about raping the doctor. They also have an electric prod that gets poked around and with 3D, you're kind of like, whoa. Um, Can we just talk about, they don't just talk about raping the doctor. They talk about plans to drug her and continually rape her while they keep her hostage in that weird fucked up facility. And clearly the plan is to keep her in that facility from on high all the way up to the doctor who double crossed her. And they have to know that this is what these fucking scumbag pieces of shit are doing. And they have to know that this is what she's being sentenced to. So when I said just when you thought it couldn't get darker or more twisted or more of a fucking are you even a human being decision of what these people are implying is going to happen jesus christ what a bunch of fucking scum oh yeah it's fucking terrible as they drive they also we also discover that one of the orderlies is the one who let the killer lose because the computer told him to even though he probably knew he shouldn't he just read it on a computer and decided to do it so fuck him uh so then the newsman and the girl, they pull up, but they see the van's all fucked up. She gets scared, and she starts screaming and crying, and he's like, hey, listen, just, you have to get back, all right? Just please get back. He checks it out, finds the dead boyfriend. She runs, finds the where his, her sister's in this hole. Uh, they freak out, and they, they get the fuck out of there. Can we talk about how fucking violent and manhandling he gets with her? It's not just because he's scared for her life. It's because he gets frustrated with her not listening to him. Yeah, because he wants to go check out this van and see, like, just what the hell's going on. But she wants to as well. And he's like, listen, I don't know who's in there. So you've got to get the fuck away from it. Yeah, but he gets way too fucking violent at the end. At one point, like, he points the gun at her. I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just settle the fuck down. Right. Like, he fucking Um, throws her across the field a little bit and then points the gun at her. Yeah. says, no, I fucking mean it or some shit like that. It's like, come on. Yeah, and let's, come on, let's understand that, you know, she thinks her sister's now dead. That that kind of shit, you know, fucks people up. Yeah, that's fucking grief and she's not fucking thinking and maybe try a little fucking tenderness, you gun-toting fucking asshole. But at the same time, he is trying to keep her safe. Uh, Right. There's just, it's... mm, It's it's just done poorly. Yes. He's still a (laughs) piece of shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they go back to the newsman's house and he can't get a hold of anyone because the sheriff's on the call and then he tries to call. uh, So he's getting busy signal because everyone's always on the phone. So he tells the girl to keep trying to call the sheriff. He's going to, he takes his double barrel shotgun and he's going to head back to the sorority to try to help out. So the orderlies then see the newsman driving the doctor's car because they recognize the car. So they start fucking with him. Uh, then we cut to doctor and uh, two of the ladies. They're talking um, and no one locked the cellar door. And they're like, because no one can get in through the cellar. Now even fraternity boys know about it. And so she's like, fuck. 
Uh, so the doctor leaves. Um, uh, can I just call bullshit on this little story point here? Yeah, sure. This is pretty much a plot line convenience thing that any slasher would have pulled in this era. So like, I'm not going to be too harsh about it. But if you are a doctor who knows that the guy was down there before, wouldn't you make sure the very first thing they do is search the house after locking that downstairs and make sure that the house is clear before they lock themselves in it? Like, wouldn't you try to do that and also force that to happen before the gentleman with the fucking gun leaves? Exactly. Yeah, you would think. <laughs> Wouldn't you want the gun to stay with you because you would Listen, think the guy was going to be there? This is a slasher movie. You need to give it some, some wide berth here. Anyway, the doctor leaves. We see one of the girls. She's playing uh, the Dungeons video game. I remember this from my past. I never was playing, able to play it well, although I was jealous she has it in the sorority house. Did it actually uh, look like the cartoon stuff when it was being played, or did they just put yeah, that on? It did. No, it always looked like the cartoon. Yeah, and you had to... It, it had a roller ball, and you had to properly roll when it told you to, or else your guy died. But it always played like a cartoon, never anything else. That's actually pretty fucking awesome, and I'm really jealous that the, none of those was ever around me as a kid. That's pretty fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I, I loved it. It was just hard for me. But when it came out, I was a little kid, so it was hard for me to play it. Sounds like the kind I of thing that you now. might want to save up for to get a replica cabinet out of. Right? Something. I mean, because there's got to be somebody out there that built that kind of shit for you with like a fucking uh, Duino or some shit inside of it or a Raspberry Pi that's got it in there. No shit. It was a revolutionary game for its time. I remember everyone loved it. Yeah, I could see fucking why. That's incredible. I thought it was bullshit. Yeah. No, no, that's that's some real shit. So anyway, another girl, she's working out in the same room and she's hanging upside down because that was something they loved doing in the 80s. I mean, and, Batman um, did it too. Yeah. Uh, the killer shows up, kills the girl playing the play uh, video game. Um, he starts, you know, uh, getting to the girl who's hanging upside down. That girl starts screaming for the doc who locks the cellar door. She comes running up. Killer ties a rope around the girl who's hanging there and uh, then ties the other end to a weight, throws the weight out the window. Obviously, he's going to snap her neck. All the 3D her in and half. All of this shit is amazing. Really well done in 3D. Um, so then, uh... We cut back to the orderlies, and uh, the newsman pulls over, and they're like, hey, we're from the hospital. He goes, great, we're going to need your help. And they go, yeah, no problem. And then they knock him the fuck out and throw him in the back. The orderlies get to the house, and the doctor sees him, already knows she's in trouble, so she runs from him. Gets into a, a room and locks the door, puts a door underneath it. They're picking the locks. But right then, the killer pops out of a closet. Nice little 3D move. Yep. Um, then the orderlies break in. There's a massive fight back and forth. The killer really is just trying to toss the orderlies aside to get to the doctor, our heroin doctor. Yeah, it's obvious. Um, so, he wants to add yeah. the female. Like, that's his active kill. He will kill these guys eventually if they don't leave him alone, but he wants her yeah. first. Uh, anyway, he, uh, she gets out, but trips over, uh, one of the orderlies' bags, falls down the stairs. Killer knocks out both orderlies and then goes down as she starts to wake up. He knocks her out again and uh, takes her. He gets her set up underneath like a, a drill bit and he's going to obviously drill into her brain. Uh, the awesome. Orderlies get, yep. The orderlies get down there uh, and they, you know, get a, a syringe so they can knock him out and they're ready. They're going to get in there. All the while and... saying horrible derogatory things and still talking about how as soon as they take care of this, they're going to they're not going to wait. They're going to rape the doctor right away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they find the doc. She's just laying there. Um, one of the guys says he's going to just rape her right there. Uh, he wants to have some light, though. So he tells the other guy to find a light switch. Uh, the guy finds a switch, but it activates the drill bit, killing the orderly who was trying to rape her. Bye, bitch. Good to see you. Get the fuck out. Uh, um, really, really grateful that that is the uh, non-consensual penetration we saw in that scene. Exactly. And it was epic, and I loved it. Yeah, anytime I get to see a would-be rapist get his head drilled out before he can even start the act, though yeah. he has full intent, I'm happy because that is the precise time to murder somebody. It really is. You are not wrong. Um. So then the killer shows up. And uh, the doctor's able to get herself loose. The killer shows up, fights the other orderly, stabs him pretty much with a crowbar. Um, the doc is able to stun the uh, killer and run away. Uh, so then the killer takes the crowbar and gives chase. We have a cat and mouse. Um, the doctor, of course, in 80s slasher style, uh, finds a lot of victims of this killer. Um, she's able to get in some air ducts. 
He starts punching holes in them. She's crawling out. Oh, it uh, violates then, the Yonic imagery rule. She's uh, in a safe space when she's in the duct, but he is penetrating it violently. So the symbolism yeah. overdoes it. Yeah. Then we see the killer tries to lower like this fucking weird spinny knife thing. It's just supposed to be something for the 3D. But she's able to get away. She's outside, but the killer's right behind her. Uh, she sees the security guard's car, but he's already dead. She then finds her car and the ambulance, and there's a newsman. And he's like, here, take the gun, shoot him. Uh, she tries, but forgets to take off the safety. By the time she does, she fires off one shot, but he's able to get the rifle away and throws it down. She runs again. Uh, she runs back into the house. After some back and forth with the killer where they fight, the newsman gets in. His his hands have been tied around his back, but he has the gun. He tries to do a quick shoot from behind his back. It doesn't work. The killer starts beating him. And then all of a sudden, the den mother shows up. And the killer sees her. She sees him, and it seems very happy. The killer is calm. He's reaching for her. And then the doctor, our heroine doctor, comes up behind him, stabs him killing him heroically this. stabbing him from behind in the throat yeah yes uh this of course causes the dead mother to go crazy she calls her a whore a harlot then we see what really happened and what it was was the dead mother uh this is apparently her son she found him getting danced with not even spanked just danced with while the girls were topless and uh, so this they were part pretty much giving him lap dances and shit too yeah. like it was pretty like risque for the 50s obviously but what they were doing was showing this kid a good time that he clearly was enjoying was into yes. and was consenting but to this caused den mother to go crazy and she's the one who killed with the nail gun um, so then we cut to where the, everyone's cleaning up the crime scene and the news is reporting. And that's our final clip. With the discovery of 11 bodies brutally murdered, tragedy has once again struck the small town of Barrington, New York. 17 years after Dark Sunday, when a similar massacre took place, the sisters of Delta Omega Sorority found themselves once again... Well, I guess I arrested the wrong guy. Howard Francis Johns, he was her son. Mrs. Collins killed the girls 20 years ago. Well, she told me all about it, about how the boy was illegitimate. She had the baby secretly and gave him a maiden name. Then she got him a job on campus so she could keep her eye on him. Being mute, he couldn't defend himself. Well, I wouldn't say that. Meanwhile, across the state, the senior staff of Crest Haven Hospital has been suspended pending criminal investigation. This is Ralph Miller, KTNN News. Now back to the studios. Wow, dude, like serious reference to psycho ending there. Right. Um, after all that, the newsman climbs in the doc's car. He's going to go with her wherever she's going. Roll credits. <laughs> Well, holy shit. The little what twist a movie. ending where it turns out that it was the mom that was just pissed off because her son was having a good time. And then the son actually became a killer because of what happened to him in the hospital. Right. They turned him into that monster before they let him out. And like you get two killers for the price of one, two different reasons. One was a um, like sort of spree killing on a vengeance quest because he was blamed for things that he didn't do. So he might as well do some of the shit he was blamed for doing is what I'm guessing he, he was left with after all those years of being drugged into a coma and who knows what else done to him. Yeah. Let alone the thing that they talked about overstimulating the muscles just to make sure you know that they ran those way more than they should have and probably turned him into a fucking hulking beast for the fun of it. And he was already big to begin with. Right. So... They probably just turned him into super jacked beast. Yeah. I love yeah, exactly. the way that they come up with all of these explanations for things that you don't really even need or nobody cares about, but they layer it so well. Um, then they start doing this little twist at the end where this facility is fucking evil and you could have an entire horror movie based on the shit that's happening in this facility. Hell, you could run an entire season of a story about, I don't know, like somewhere in America, like a horror story, a, like that would be just like this and like people would watch it and love it like an american horror story right like in an asylum that is pretty yeah. much exactly like this yeah like oh yeah and it's just a horror story in america right not just a slasher movie that takes place partially in an american horror story style asylum if well, you now, my drift. now i totally understand what you're saying <laughs> and we're not at all fucking 
taking someone else's idea. Anyway. <laughs> no, what I'm what I'm getting at is the look, the feel, the uh the sensation that everybody is always trying to emulate whenever they are trying to think of a slasher movie. Like for instance, the the, th- the movie that I was trying to think of that um perfectly demonstrates what I'm talking about. Uh I believe it's called The Final Girls, which um has Marilyn Ackman, I think, and um ah, that dude from Vikings and stuff. But basically, um the movie that I'm thinking of, the mother was an actress or is an actress. Um, she passes away uh, after a failed audition and the daughter and her are not getting along. Well, the mother was in a film, uh, like a slasher film that was like Camp Blood or some shit like that that's like super fucking famous. And she's been pigeonholed ever since because of it. And she had such a difficult career acting and can't get really parts because everybody won't forget that one fucking movie, no matter yeah. what she does. Well, she dies like that. And so like a year or two later, they have a screening of her slasher movie that was shot in the 80s. And uh, the kids get thrown into it and they have to survive the movie. That's the whole plot line, right? <laughs> All right. The slasher movie they get thrown into is essentially a comedic loving lampoon and parody of slasher films. And what they tried to create in that film in doing that is exactly the same kind of feeling they were shooting for that this movie gives you. Like they mm. wanted it to feel like that. You know what I yeah. mean? Where like it's on the verge of just being comedic with everything because it's so amped up. But I think it's because there's so much like everything is just cranked to 11 that it's just distorted everything and then you add the 3d on top of that and it becomes this like almost surrealistic mind fuck of an experience of a movie especially if you're doing the red and blue because it fucking gives you a headache and it takes a real long time to get through the movie and it makes you really kind of focus in on what you're doing and like try and get through it and it's super fucking difficult and i can't even imagine taking notes for that my man that was, uh, yeah, it was not the easiest go about, but, uh, it was still, it was a good movie. I mean, fuck, at least, you know, you can get a lot worse than that, so. Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this flick. I completely yeah. did. This is a good time. It's a really good time. Yeah. And uh, the real 3D, when you don't have to deal with the red and blue, uh, because like I said, uh, for me, it's a superior technology. It works so much better than the anaglyph. And I think most people that have experienced it would say that as well for the real 3D or, or the, I think it's the polarized version of it is what they call real 3D, but that's what it is. Um, yeah. That works significantly better. And all the 3D effects that they throw into this, while they are very much gimmicky and like, come on, let's just have a good time. They also really put it where it counts and like throw gore and violence pieces is at you and the one that i really think about is the girl running out of the van like that's the one that i want to watch in 3d again because that one really made me pop you know? yeah that was a good one that was uh that was fun that was uh that was a good kill yeah and it's a it's a real fucking shame because like i feel like if this could have gotten to the right audiences at the right time man this could have done really well i think this probably would have been remembered a lot fucking better had it gotten the chance it's just too much all around but like in the best possible fucking way well, I mean, you would think maybe it would have been remembered at all. Because, I mean, I just don't think it's even remembered at all. Yeah, I, I don't know what the release history of it is or, or how it even works or anything like that. Like I said, I like the cover. I like the fact that it was in 3D. And my sadistic ass could not wait to give you the headache that this review was going to cause for the red and blue 3D. Yeah, I mean, and it, 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 it did. <laughs> and the audience is grateful for all of the belly aching you had to do about it. Yes, of course they are. They love it when I'm in pain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're fucking sadistic, and we're the masochists that keep doing this for them. Yes. <laughs> I think we're done talking about Silent Madness. Let's give the folks some psyop news and call it a night. What do you say? All right. Here we Fine. go. Sounds good to me. We're going to take that break, and we're going to play the Anti-Nowhere League, because now that we know that it's the mama, the theme secretly is about mamas who have to do with killing or mistreating their young men. When we come back, we'll have some psyop news. <laughs>
sometimes when I think I maybe have way more stuff to work out with my family, I hear songs like this from like the Anti Nowhere League or somebody else, and I think, you know what? I think we're going to be just fine, Mom and Dad. I think we're going to be just fine. <laughs> yeah, right? Everything's going to be all right, Mom and Dad. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I know I might be a disappointment, but I'm trying to be better. I swear, Mom and Dad. I, just, I don't think you are. Don't lie to people. <laughs> all right, well, I'll stop lying to people if you give me some sorry news. I got some sign-up news. It's uh, from Pete. That would probably be our boy Pete from a uh, Good Beer, Bad Movie Night. Pete, I believe. That, that is correct. Yes. Yes. I'm going to yep. take out the name because I don't know if he uses his name on the podcast or not. Yep. So there we go. I can say Pete, though, right? Yeah, Pete's fine. Just not yeah. the last it's name. From, it's, from, it's from Pete. Um, man gets scrotal necrosis <laughs> after a snake bites him on penis while he's on the toilet. We've had something similar to this, but I can believe that this would happen more than once in the history of humanity. I mean, it ha- so It had to have because this, this article is dead November 2021. So <laughs> Either that or did you check the source? Uh, the source is from uh, uh, the IFL Science. It's going to cost website. you some serious cock. All right. We're just we're going to let it go and we're going to pretend like this is possibly real because uh, this uh, is something that could listen. happen. This is something, I mean, apparently, uh, a man has suffered from uh, scrotal necrosis, or death of tissue on the scrotum. It's going to cost you some serious cock. After a snake bit his genitals while he was on a relaxing, until that point, holiday in South Africa. And we're back to dicks. Yeah, the 47-year-old from the Netherlands was staying on a nature reserve when, while toileting, a snake struck from the toilet and bit his genitals. Shut up, are you talking about penises? Being far from a hospital, he had to wait three hours to be airlifted to the nearest trauma center. This is in like meantime, traces of death fucked a porno. The toilet snake was identified as a snouted cobra. Uh, the snake, while not usually aggressive, will stand its ground if it feels cornered. Like in say the toilet bowl. Say if someone's butt cheeks and genitals are blocking their exit from the toilet. Oh, blow They're like, the, the snake's just sitting there relaxing, and all of a sudden it's, it's got a, just a steaming pile of cock and balls in its face. Clip. Yep. <laughs> All blowjobs should be teethy. <laughs> uh, before he arrived at the hospital, the patient experienced pain all the way from his groin to his upper chest, plus a burning sensation in the unfortunate genitals themselves. Though the venom of the snake is neurotoxic, he was likely enough to avoid any neurological symptoms. Though luck is relative when you've been bitten on the penis hours away from medical attention. Upon arrival in the cost hospital, you some serious cock. <laughs> Upon arrival in the hospital, he was fully conscious and had developed a fever and had swollen genitals with deep purple discoloration, indicating scrotal necrosis. I think I dated her once. Your silicone nice. penis budget is out of control. Scrotal necrosis. I'm surprised that's not a bad name someplace. Oh, it is. Right? You just can't read it because the fucking logo is made out of like wicker and shit that you can't understand what the fuck it's supposed to mean. That makes sense. <laughs> if so, you're in the metal uh, scene, you are laughing your fucking ass off right now because you know it's fucking true. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, um, eight doses of venom anti serum were administered, and he was transferred to intensive care where he required dialysis for acute kidney injury before he stabilized. The necrosis in his genitals stabilized too, at which point the medical team performed a surgical debridement, removing debridement? the dead tissue. Debridement or de- yeah. yeah, debriding, debridement, maybe. I mean, the yeah, de- debri- they want to put their teeth in man meat. Debridement, I don't know. Debridement. Anyway, yeah. remo- debridement. Uh, removing the dead tissue. There are, of course, images in the case report. Though we advise looking, advise against looking at them. But oh, if any of you want to find the story in the group. Go look at pictures if that's what you're into. I am going to opt out of looking at a blurge ball sack that needs to be drained yeah. of the venom. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing it either. Uh, now that you're back, uh, here is the <laughs> happy ending. <laughs> After being transferred to the Netherlands, his team was able to remove more dead tissue before performing a successful graft on the man's penis and scrotum, replacing the dead tissue with tissue taken from his groin. A year later, his wounds had healed nicely, and he had full sensation in his penis. Hey, all right, his taint saved the day. Yes, and even better news, he had the dubious honor of becoming the first case of N. annuflera, 
en- envenomation of the genitals described in medical literature. Uh, our take-home message, the team concluded in the report, always flush the toilet before sitting down in countries notorious for their snake population. Also, this guy is going to have one hell of a fucking porn career should he want it. Yeah, yeah. He's got the, he's got, literally, if he doesn't nickname his penis Venom, I don't know what he's doing with his life. He's already wasted it. <laughs> it's, oh, Jesus Christ. It's already over. If you're not, if you're literally not going to call your penis Venom after that, are you actually even trying anymore? All right, let's fucking end it. And with that, we're going to play the Ending <laughs> Legion Patreon ad, and we're going to have the song from Jets, Nobody Loves You Like Your Mother Does. Ooh, what? If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. knowing the plot line of this movie and everything that feels so much more sinister and gruesome yeah but it's all right like what if what if it was the reason the mother was so jealous is because he was around for her to love like the ladies were it that could be yeah i mean she obviously had issues so oh jesus christ see what this movie fucking does to you man i'm telling you this is a fucking cinema psyop for the first time on cinema psyops because this movie fucked with our heads yeah, man, makes you think things. Yeah, th- I've only ever been like this much distorted in my perspective on a film after reviewing it, like we were on Horror House on Highway Five. Yeah. Do you remember how we but were how- like, if they're doing this on purpose, it's so fucking brilliant, and I hate them for it. Like, I feel yeah. like I'm going through that again. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't doubt it. But <laughs> <laughs> you're having to think about shit again. If you're nah. if you're curious what the fuck I'm talking about and what I mean by Horror House on Highway Five and some kind of weird episode that I'm talking about, and while we're laughing at you, they're gonna make you think. Let's tell you exactly where you can find said episodes that I'm discussing here with my co-host, Matt. Legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. I can't tell you the exact episode, but there you go. That's the fucking title that you're going to find it on. Yeah. Well done. (laughs) Good job, everyone. (laughs) You can search the website once you're there with a control F and just type in the words Horror House on Highway 5. It'll take you right to our episode. Oh yeah! Wow, there you go. Minimum, wow. minimum text shit. Yeah, minimum tech support on how to do that shit when you're <laughs> when you're using your own browser, my man. Yeah, good job. If good. you'd like some further tech support, I can't offer you that. But what I can offer you is a thrice daily meme dump during the work day for the working man at Instagram on cinema underscore psyops. Yeah, get the memes. They'll help you get through your day. You know that day sucks. 
days are terrible. Even Get though, through them, though it goes underappreciated, I still release the occasional Catterday here and there. And I mean, you know, who doesn't like a good Catterday? Usually that's Twitter, where you can find me as at court yeah. underscore psyop. They're too concerned with tweeting tweets of twats at you when you're good, and then tweeting yeah. at you like a couple of fucking twats when you're bad. Listen, Twitter is where you go for porn bots. <laughs> Literally, Twitter is where I go for porn bots, Matt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, the only thing Twitter's good for <laughs> porn bots, right? <laughs> that and discourse you never fucking ask for from people you don't care about doing things called canceling and ratioing you don't understand or give a shit about. That's right. What the fuck? I didn't understand any words he just said. Shit. <laughs> I know it's fucking English, but I'm pretty sure I don't understand what it was that I just said because I'm an old man. Let me get in my truck and rant about how life's going to be. If you're, I was born in the late 1900s. If you would like to join the other old people that are hanging out on the Facebook group Cinema PsyOps, because let's face it, the kids have abandoned it, and it's just a ghost town of a bunch of bitter old fucks like us. It really is, man. It's just, just us old people all just hanging out. I stay in contact with the people that I've reached through there because it is the simplest, and that is why. And I'm yeah. Court Psyops there if you'd like to be one of those people. I'll try to make it a little more enjoyable for you in this desert ghost land of awful that is now Facebook. Yeah, it all is just awful, isn't it? <laughs> We're all awful. Everyone's awful now. If you would like to write me a long form letter about all of the things that I've said tonight that you have a serious problem with and would like to have me consider them very much to each individual point as if we are having some kind of a debate, only it's one sided and you're writing it all in email. The best place to do that is cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a long way to get there. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, but it seems like that seems to be the most of what I'm getting from email from cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. It's it's either that or I'm getting a lot of people who are trying to help me grow my podcast and or teach me how to SEO optimize our website. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, I remember a while and I would get like nothing, but hey, I'm doing an independent movie. I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're out there wondering why the fuck Sam Raimi keeps asking you for money for making another <laughs> fucking movie and why it's Bruce Campbell that's contacting you as well to make another fucking movie and you know none of this is factual or actual or true, kick the fuck out of this week, mark that shit as spam, and make them both your bitch. much how you doing ah uh, could be better could be worse i uh, just want to you know get the show recorded so i can get it edited and get it out in time word i'm recording on my side so one two three see efficient <laughs> blue microphone coming through and everything all right, so the episode's clips are now downloading, but for some reason it's taking forever. Now it's dipping the file finally. I'm giving you the updates as they happen. This is great. <laughs> I'm currently opening my sound plant, and the files are zipped and downloaded. Wow, that was... It took it longer for their API to fucking zip it. <laughs> to, it to reminds me, remind me of a True Lies. Uh, when he's like, all right, I'm in. Uh, going up her dress. I take it off her under. No we just copy the goddamn files. <laughs> uh, one of the only times I thought Tom Arnold was funny was True Lies. <laughs> I did like that line that he had about um, what kind of a sick bitch takes the ice cube trays, I think was his line in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. What kind of, because he's talking to, he caught, he catches Arnold Schwarzenegger's daughter stealing from him. He's like, I thought it was her boyfriend because, you know, the divorce and every, uh, his ex-wife's boyfriend because of the divorce. And he's like, but, you know, uh, the, what kind of cold bitch takes the fucking ice cube trays, huh, Harry? 
<laughs> yeah, I love that fucking line. That's something that uh, we have said, um, my friends and I growing up, like yeah. for years. Um, not that True Lies was ever that great, but there's parts of it that every teenage boy definitely loves. There, there's parts of it. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I never thought I was going to have a thing for Jamie Lee Curtis until I saw that, but all right. I Fine. already Whatever had movie. a thing for Jamie Lee Curtis before that and was super yeah. glad when that happened because that's the kind of pervert I am. Yeah, that was uh, that was some stuff. I had so, True Lies on Laserdisc when I bought that dude's Laserdisc shit. Um, yeah, oh yeah. Right when basically Laserdisc got declared dead and nobody was going to make them anymore. And I'm like, now's uh-huh. the time to get in on the market. Now, this is <laughs> the minute crypto dies, Court's going to be like, now it's time to get into some crypto. <laughs> yeah, you buy NFTs when they're not worth anything. Yeah, yeah, that's what we got to do. I mean, they're not worth anything now, but you're wasting money on them. Okay, I got all the clips loaded and everything. Um, I think we're good to go. Um, you hear this? This will keep it quiet. You hear that okay? I heard it fine. All right, I'm hearing it too. I'm recording. You're rolling. Let's fucking rock. Yeah. Wait, Silent Madness 3D, right? Silent Mad. Yes, yes. Okay, good. Let's fucking roll. Like, it totally got me in the real 3D because it she popped out of the screen coming out of that van at me. And nice. It was like Texas Chainsaw See, Massacre I'm gonna have to watch style the- pop. The real 3D one. Yeah. If you got a real 3D device that you could watch it on, totally. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, mine's in my bedroom that. and that ain't happening for you. You know, I like to think we're pretty close. <laughs> we're not uh, that close, my man. Not. <laughs> You're not getting so in where my intimates are. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting in where all your unmentionables are. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> all your delicates. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look, we're getting older. We're using older people terminology. We're accepting. Uh, that I sent with Bev to your stupid bowl party. Yes. <laughs> Which is a slant on the bowl, not you. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, my time. <laughs> yeah, for once, it's not a slant on you. Uh, <laughs> for once, I'm not being made fun of for things I like. <laughs> I can't wait to make Matt have a migraine all day from watching this. (laughs) Piece of shit. (laughs) He deserves every little bit of it, too. (laughs) Make me wait till a fucking Wednesday to record a fucking show. How fucking dare he try to have life. (laughs) How dare he have obligations. Motherfucker. I'll show him. (laughs) (laughs) I will show you by finishing this review. No, I don't hate and um, that is, um, God damn it. I know it is uh, Nightmare on Shadow Woods. Um, I'll have to look it up to, to think of it off the top of my head, but I've only ever seen it in one other slasher film. Give me two shakes. Yeah, bro. It's fucking the tagline is it's not cranberry sauce, and I can't even think of it right now. Blood Rage. Jesus fucking Christ. It just came to me finally. Okay, so. The Blood Rage. This was made in that time, in that place, and so perfectly represents what everybody thinks of when they think of this type of movie. Like, in both cases, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, the 70s wasn't all of this smiles and rainbows and we wear neon and 80s. fucking, yeah, or 80s, I said 90s, all the 80s and where it's like neon and woo-hoo and mullets and all that shit everywhere. It's, I mean, it's there hard. were mullets everywhere, but it was also a lot of fucking paneling left over from the 70s with holes punched through it because your dad's drunk all the time. Yeah, and a lot of fucking, hold on, wait, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Everything okay over there? Yeah, I'm good. That wasn't a sharing thing. That was just an example. Okay, because sometimes I get worried, man. I just want to make sure. Yeah. You know, I'm here for you to open up to, and then I'm going to mock you for it. But fuck it. At least I'm here. (laughs) So. I mean, it may be a little personal experience, and it may be a friend of mine's dad that did that shit. I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. It's just that's what the 80s looked like, was broken fucking paneling everywhere. (laughs) Left over from the 70s. Well, for you. That's what it looked like for you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> For you. Uh, I didn't have any broken paneling. Anyone? Well, you were raised uh, by a loving family, weren't you? Yeah, well, I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Oh, good for you! Good for you! It's useless now, isn't it? Well, I mean, it sustains me. Uh, Let's move on. Yeah. So, uh, now the next day, uh, or, uh, so then, uh, okay, uh, I should have said it. That was the end of that 20 minutes. Okay, that's fine. Why don't you go, and that's the end of that 20 minutes, and I'll cut it and fix it, and then this will all end up at outtakes. There you go. And that's the end of that 20 minutes. All right, now, Court, find out wherever the fuck the end of that 20 minutes was. Yeah. Three, two, one.
She is the epitome of heroin. When you think of heroin, yeah, yeah. you think of this doctor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, everyone should be happy. This is so fucking um, dumb. I love that we're going with it, though. I'm just, just going to go with more heroin. Uh, heroin. The more, uh, we're the, going with heroin. The more heroin we can do on this show, the better the for more, us. The more references the, to heroin that we can have, uh, maybe they'll sponsor us. Um, <laughs> I will take that money. I'm not too yeah, shy. I will, I will take all the heroin money. <laughs> Give me um, all the money for all of the heroin. I fully support heroines. We'll, we'll become like how the 1950s were with cigarettes. We'll be like, hey, every time I'm doing the dishes, I only do Nelson's brand heroin. <laughs> we should move on now. We really should. This is a slasher movie. You need to give it some some wide berth here. Right. Uh, this is this is my first actual legit complaint about the movie that I can't really kind of excuse away. And I just because I've been blowing it so hard, I need to also give it a little slap to the face and call it a piece of shit. Yeah. Because it likes it like that, Matt. It does. It says more, please. <laughs> Which is what the audience is saying instead of this weird sexual talk. More review, yeah, less do, of that. We do some weird shit. So anyway. But only for uh, movies that we like. That's right. Yeah, emotional damage, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a reference to a fucking meme that was also another fucking meme that's unbelievably I, truncated. I, I know. I'm like a meme and another meme from another meme. I broke like 16 different memes. This is like if Christopher Nolan started doing memes, only it makes sense. Yes. If you're literally not going to call your penis venom after that, are you actually even trying anymore? Shut up. Are you talking about penises? We just were. We just were past me. We just were. <laughs> I got Botox in my scrotum. So, I'm, I'm sure that's a problem too, but it's smooth. <laughs> smooth as eggs. Smooth as eggs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Everyone will be coming oh on God. my face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to do another news or not, or... I'm taking another dick. Well, let's end it. <laughs> yeah, that would make my editing easier anyway, so that's that sounds yeah. like a good plan. I mean, we're on a shorter deadline, and you've got to edit all this shit. It's not like it's going to be the easiest fucking thing. <laughs> no, but we're having fun while we're recording, and that's more that's... important to me than cleaning up the edit. He says now until he has to edit it. Yeah, until he has to edit it, then you're all pissed for the next show. We, <laughs> and future... we can stop this now and maybe have fun on the next show too. Right. And future me who is listening to this that has to pull this out because he should be actually closing out the show and then move it to the outtakes because that's who you are. You obsessive fucking freak. <laughs> and, and, and remember, you be mad at you, not me. All right. Future court, you be mad at him, not me. All right. I could already look it out for you. I could already feel the fucking rage coming back through time at me for me. This is amazing. Yeah, right. <laughs> wondering why the fuck Sam Raimi keeps asking you for money for making another fucking movie and why it's Bruce Campbell that's contacting you as well to make another fucking movie and you know none of this is factual or actual or true. Kick the fuck out of this week, mark that shit as spam and make them both your bitch. We're out. <laughs> We're out. Jesus Christ. And I am done recording.